गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन कैन यू हियर मी यस ओके थैंक यू सो आई सपोज दैट एवरीबडी इज ओके विद द टेस्ट बींग ऑन सैटरडे and i did not receive any objections so i am assuming that it's okay and the portions will be exactly what we had in the two assignments nothing more okay so, so the chapters included in the first three assignments those will be the ones and i'll send the solutions for the second and third assignment today so that you can go through them um right okay so <clears throat> let's uh, continue with the chronic penny model we start recording this okay <clears throat> so this model is special because it offers as i said before also it's a exactly a solvable model of band structure and when you have an exactly solvable model of band structure then you can analyze it to any detail that you want and figure out why band gaps are arising why bands are forming and and questions like that okay so <clears throat> it's a exactly solvable model of band structure and <clears throat> the idea is very simple take a one dimensional lattice and uh, idealize or simplify the potential the periodic potential okay and this is a trick that is done in many other cases okay <clears throat> that is if you want to get exactly solvable let's say time dependent systems Uh, or exactly solvable uh, spin systems and things like that the first thing you can do is to simplify the periodic potential okay so <clears throat> last time we had discussed that if you had a real 1d system the potential might be something like this okay where this is where the ions are sitting and this is the interionic spacing <clears throat> this is simplified in the chronic penny model to something very simple and <clears throat> excuse me so <clears throat> the idea is that you do this and this is some u0 and this and so on <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> so this is minus b this is 0 this is a this is a plus b and so on so the lattice parameter of this system is a plus b <clears throat> that's the periodicity of the system right and <clears throat> uh, the main idea is that wherever these wells are that's where the ions are sitting okay <clears throat> and there is a barrier for the electrons to go from one ion to the other ion right and <clears throat> can somebody tell me what that barrier could be <coughs> excuse me <coughs> what binding is binding potential sorry can you repeat that krishna can you repeat that is yeah, that <coughs> binding potential of electron to the that is the specific ion <coughs> so yeah. what you're saying is each each uh, ion binds some number of electrons and if the electron has to hop to the other ion because it is also feeling an attraction from the nucleus of the other ion then it has to cross a barrier and that barrier is basically the attractive potential of the first ion of the host ion to which it belongs to okay yeah right <coughs> so this is the lattice parameter so um, now how do we represent this this can be represented as minus h cross squared by 2m d2 psi by dx squared plus u of x psi equal to e psi okay 
Now, what is the u of x? This is basically the u of x versus x, which means it is zero between zero to a. It is zero between a plus b to a plus two b, and so on. And it is u zero between minus b to zero and a to a plus b, and so on. Okay, so this is all u zero. So the the biggest simplification that has happened is that because the potential is flat in in regions, this is called piecewise constant. So because the potential is piecewise constant, okay, we know the exact wave functions in every piece. so what do i mean by that see we know how to solve the schrodinger's equation if the potential is a constant okay so which means that we know the wave function here we know the wave function here we know the wave function here and so on okay but we need a wave function for the entire system okay so to get that wave function what we will do is we will just match the boundary conditions so in that sense Uh, this becomes a problem of electrons traveling through barriers so this is something that most of you would have done in your uh, quantum mechanics course right so electrons traveling through a barrier potential and what happens when electrons travel through a barrier potential let me uh, let me just ask um okay uh right sorry just give me one minute I want to see who are the participants uh, gautam are you online yes sir so gautam can you tell me what happens uh, in one particle quantum mechanics when electrons travel through a barrier so the problem that i am trying to describe is a very simple problem let's say i have something like this okay this must be a problem that you are you, you would have solved right in uh, first quantum mechanics yeah yes. so what happens here what is the wave function that i should take here uh, that is a free wave uh, wave function exactly. that free is free electron wave function, function right plane yes plane wave exactly so what should it be what should i write here uh, e to the power i k x in the form okay. of okay e to the power i k x is that the only part in this uh, uh, in this region or is there something uh, else also ha no. huh. yeah uh, it um, it uh, it has some uh, reflector part also e to the power minus is. i k x very nice okay so the electron could hit the barrier and it can yes. either get reflected or it yes. can get transmitted transmitted right? yes correct so there can be a transmission here also right yes now yes. let's figure out the wave function in this part Okay, so in this part, you said there can be a, a forward moving part and there can be a backward moving part, correct? Yes. So there can be a a plus b. E to the power minus i k. Minus i k. It's very nice. Now, isn't it exactly the same thing here also inside this barrier? Uh, no, sir. But this will decay. Uh, okay. Uh, so if a function will decay, decay, you when you say it will decay. you are assuming something what is it that you are assuming uh, your energy right. of the electron is less than the potential barrier very nice okay so we are assuming here that the energy is less than u0 so the electron will again there will be a forward moving component and there will be a backward moving component also yes is that right uh, no sir it it will only decay and pass <coughs> through the barrier okay okay so should i write this as minus qx or can i also write plus qx uh only minus qx because yeah. uh, if you write plus qx then uh, uh, at x tends to infinity the uh, for function diverges very good but here is the x tending to infinity remember uh, no. barrier is finite yes barrier is finite barrier is finite then can i disallow any function let's say can i disallow e to the power qx or can i disallow e to the power minus qx uh, no sir i don't think so right so both of them have to be present yes okay so which means the wave function inside the barrier will have the form this plus this yes sir. correct hmm yes sir. and <clears throat> uh, once you go here 
right there there has to be again something which goes here right but now what happens here is this also present no sir there is no reflection only okay. transition so there can be only let's say e times e to the power i p or let's say kx yes sir right okay very nice yeah thank you gautam you can mute yourself okay so basically the problem of this uh, um, periodic 1d potential is very similar to the problem of a set of barriers which are periodically placed so these barriers have some transmission they have some reflection and so on so all we have to do is we have to consider the wave function inside this region where the potential is zero and inside this region where the potential is some finite value then match the wave function and match the derivative okay but there is one more input that we also have the input is that this potential is a periodic potential it's a periodic potential in real space okay so if it is a periodic potential in real space then there is a theorem that applies okay so uh uttam are you online hello yes sir yeah so uttam what is the theorem that we will apply if the potential is uh, periodic sir a wave function will not be periodic so there will be one uh, means the uh, exponential times u of x uh so the wave function is not periodic you are right so what will the what will be the form of the wave function what is the theorem called uh this uh right now only block theorem ha uh, yeah block theorem. good okay so the uh, so please remember okay after this course please do not forget that there is something called a block theorem okay this is the essence of band structure of periodic systems hmm yes sir okay good so block theorem applies to this system because it has a periodic potential and what does block theorem tell us uh, this uh, means uh, the energy or hamiltonian will be uh, periodic or uh, and this uh, i will not be periodic wave function it's not periodic but what is the statement of the block theorem in, in terms of the wave function so the the point that i'm asking is let's say i have a 1d system and i translate the wave function by this uh, by the lattice parameter okay yes, sir. and i want to relate that to the wave function at the same point x then yes, what has to come here uh, the exponential e to the power i k e or i k a right very nice now let me ask you one more thing okay what is this k here is this the momentum of the electron so uh, this is uh, not the momentum of electron but the crystal crystal momentum right very good so what you are saying is this is not the momentum of the electron this is actually the crystal momentum correct now this fact is going to be crucial here okay really crucial so make sure you understand this fact very very well so you can mute yourself uttam thanks <clears throat> so the point is that <clears throat> the k here does not represent the electron's energy okay the k here represents a new quantum number and for this quantum number now we are going to find out the energy value or the eigen energy value that corresponds to this quantum number okay so this is the ultimate goal of this problem to find the ek corresponding to a certain k which is the crystal momentum or which is the quantum number right we will however consider another k which represents the energy of the electron or the momentum of the electron okay and the distinction between this capital k and this small k must be remembered at all times that is the main issue here okay so let me summarize what are we doing here we have a 1d periodic potential problem and this 1d periodic potential problem is being viewed as a sequence of barriers which is periodic in space and for each region of this uh, uh, periodic potential we know how to solve the schrodinger's equation and the reason we know that is because the potential is flat in every region so we can just replace the u of x by some u0 wherever there is a barrier by 0 where there is no barrier okay and if there is no barrier it becomes a free particle problem 
if there is a barrier it again becomes a kind of a uh, you know decaying particle problem as uh, uh, gautam mentioned so <clears throat> that also we know how to solve okay so let's uh, uh, proceed with this with the solution of this are there any doubts so far ha has the problem been uh, explained clearly if there are any doubts let me know now but this is the model of a real system okay this is the model of some maybe 1d crystal is the problem clear okay sir what is the subscript uh, uh, in the psi that k that's correct so I, the wave function will also have the quantum number right so when you write in the uh, hydrogen atom don't you write psi n l m sigma yeah right so exactly in the hydrogen atom you solve the central potential problem and you get certain quantum numbers right so here also when we will solve this eigen value problem this is the eigen value problem that we are trying to solve correct for u of x being this periodic potential and when we solve this we will get certain new quantum numbers which is the k okay and corresponding to k there will be an eigen function but there will also be an eigen value okay so the psi k x is the block state with crystal momentum k or h cross k okay and with an eigen value ek fine yeah that's it but k in the exponential and the k in the subscript both are same both are absolutely the same yes that's correct and that is what determines the phase factor that you obtain by doing a translation in real space yeah okay <coughs> let me clear this <coughs> right so uh, as i explained before let me just draw the potential once again and one thing that i would like to mention here is that we are considering electron energies which are smaller than u0 okay and uh, greater than 0 <clears throat> so it's with respect to some reference okay and basically we want to say that these electrons are actually bound in the crystal so they are not free they are bound within the crystal and near the ions they are they can be considered as free but away from the ions in between the ions they are considered as bound okay so because in inside the barrier we will only get bound states right or decaying states sorry not bound states but decaying states here they are bound Uh, in the in the free regions there will be bound states so similar to what you get when you have a potential well problem so if you had a finite potential well then you can find out certain bound states okay which is what you get in the hydrogen atom problem also so <clears throat> uh, in the hydrogen atom problem the ground state has an energy which is minus 13.6 uh, by n squared or the nth level has right and this minus sign tells you that these are all bound states okay so uh, same thing here the u0 is the potential barrier and zero is where the ions are so that's a reference okay and <clears throat> what we are going to do is we are going to write down the wave function in each of these regions and then match the uh, wave functions and use also the blocks theorem that's the main idea so this is uh, 2a so this is a a plus b because this is b and this is 2a plus b and this is 2a plus 2b okay <coughs> right so now let me ask uh, uh purnendu to online yes sir yeah so purnendu can we start with writing down the uh, different conditions let's first use the blocks theorem okay so the blocks theorem tells us something about the wave function right and this we discussed in the previous slide which is this so can you tell me how should this be written for this problem so here um, a is uh, a plus b yes so the psi k of x okay i will not write something here i will tell you what i will i will ask you this okay now here what should i write e to the power ik a 
a plus b yes correct and here there is the x okay now uh, <coughs> let's say i am in between 0 to a plus b okay okay now what happens when i translate from here okay where will i go i will go here right okay. hmm so let me do this from here to here okay so let's start from somewhere in between a to a plus b so let's say i am in between these two okay so which means x belongs to a to a plus b hmm now here can you tell me in what region in this in the negative region where will i come back to when i subtract it by a plus b it's minus b to 0 exactly very nice so you can see that also from here because when i subtract a plus b from both of these i will get a minus a minus b which is minus b and a plus b minus a minus b uh, minus a plus b is going to give me 0 0 yes very nice okay so this is basically the condition that we will be using yeah you can mute yourself okay so this is one thing then next we are going to use the continuity of the wave function and also its derivative okay so but before that let's write down the wave function in the different regions of the potential so let's say x belongs to 0 to a <coughs> Uh, Ritham, are you online? Ritham, Chakravarti. Sir, I am Ritham. Ha. So uh, you can hear me, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So for x belonging to zero to a, what would be the wave function? That's uh, a. It a it is equal i k x. Okay. Plus Now, b. Now is this k going to be the same as this k that I should write here? Uh, no sir, but hmm. you said the answer is correct. It should its the answer is no. It should not be the same k. Okay. So let me first write this and then you can justify why why it should not be the same. <coughs> okay so tell me uh the the capital k here is uh, is a, a single particle state um, because the uh, electron's wave function is this okay and uh, the small k is the crystal momentum as you mentioned before yes so we mentioned that yes but uh, let's say i find out using this wave function the eigen energy of this particular wave function can i do that can i find out the eigen energy corresponding to this wave function in this region 0 to a okay before yes, that yes. tell me what is the schrodinger's equation in the region 0 to a uh, uh, in in that region the potential energy part is 0 0 exactly so it's going to be minus h cross squared by 2m d2 by dx squared psi is equal to e psi correct yes sir and if i apply this to this wave function what will be the e that's h cut square capital k square by twice m exactly so the main issue here is that we are saying that in this region 0 to a the particle is behaving like a free particle and the real momentum of the particle is actually h cross k okay yes. and the energy is h cross square k square by 2m right now the uh, the main so you can mute yourself thanks thanks rita so the main issue here is that there will be a certain energy values corresponding to the crystal momentum k that we choose okay the blocks theorem is imposing a certain condition on these wave functions so these wave functions cannot be arbitrary okay essentially what we are going to derive is a relation between k and capital k okay so this kind of a relation will actually help us to figure out what is the energy corresponding to a certain crystal momentum k okay so uh, you you should see how this uh, solution proceeds right 
so and also make sure that you understand that the energy that we are trying to find is first defined as a free particle energy but later on that same energy okay becomes uh, a, a mapping from the crystal momentum to the eigen values of the full of the full problem okay so that's what one has to remember right so and if you uh, you please keep thinking about this if you have any doubts then let me know as we go along okay so next uh, we will take the region between <coughs> minus b to 0 and as we discussed earlier the solution in this region is going to be this plus this okay now uh is surbhi online yes sir yeah so surbhi why did i write here q and not uh, small k or capital k so capital k is the electrons momentum okay uh just give me one second okay uh i have to take this call huh Okay, sorry for the interruption. Yes, yeah, Surbhi, you were saying that uh, uh, the Q should be something. Yeah, go on. Uh, yes, sir. Hmm. Since for the zero uh, to a part, we are taking the uh, free electron part. Correct. And the other part, is, uh, which is bounded. Mm-hmm. It's a barrier. Sorry, it's not bounded. Bar- it's barrier, huh? And to the minus b and zero. as we had taken uh, as we had seen the previous one that there is only transmittance part mm-hmm. so maybe so, that's why um, we are taking electron to momentum different now tell me something so this is either amplification or decaying correct the e to the power qx and e to the power minus qx depending on whether x is positive or negative isn't it yes sir yeah so what should be the schrodinger's equation i should write here in in parallel to what we have written here can you tell me what we should write here in this region minus b to 0 minus h bit square 2 by 2m del square plus u not psi exactly equal to e psi correct very nice and this means that i should do here d2 psi by dx square is equal to e minus u0 psi right hmm. okay yeah so now here as e was defined in terms of the capital k right so the mm-hmm. e minus u0 because e is already defined e minus u0 will define the capital q yes sir okay and the idea is that e is smaller than u0 which means this is a negative thing right so h cross squared q squared by 2m is going to be u0 minus e that is the idea okay thank you sir yeah yes. <coughs> so this is one thing that we must remember and the second thing we need to remember is this okay so what you see here is that the capital k is also entering this relation so q is not an independent variable the capital q is also dependent on the capital k okay so there are two unknowns in the problem right one is the small k which is a crystal momentum and the other one is the capital k which is the real momentum okay so and these two is uh, are going to be related through these uh, through the wave function conditions that is the boundary conditions and also the blocks theorem okay and using those relations we will arrive at 
what are the energy eigen values possible for each value of the crystal momentum so that's the plan <coughs> yeah uh, any doubt so far no okay <coughs> all right so um now we want to impose the conditions that psi and d psi by dx are continuous at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to a okay so if we want to do that so suhas are you online yes sir yeah so suhas tell me what i should do if i want to impose these conditions so i want them to be continuous at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to a okay and just to remind you this was the periodic potential so this is 0 this is minus b this is a this is a plus b hmm you know the form of the wave functions here you know the form of the wave functions here right and also here okay so uh, if i want to impose now the boundary conditions here and here tell me what should i write between uh, a 0 and a uh, there is potential is equal to 0 yes at uh, so what, what was the wave function here there wave function is uh, e to the a e to the power ik plus b e to the power minus ik correct okay so if i want to impose this boundary condition what should i do continuity at x is equal to 0 so is there a different function in between minus b to 0 yeah what is the different function the different function is equal to this uh, right side one yeah, between a to a plus uh is that equal so what you are saying is the wave function here and the wave function here are identical is the wave function periodic yeah yeah no the wave function is not uh -huh. periodic ah uh, no. there is a block theorem that relates them isn't yeah. it yeah yeah hmm. the wave function is not so periodic. let's now take this as the base for us and now tell me within this barrier what was the form of the wave function that we that we decided you remember right c e to the power q yeah x. c e to the power q uh, x plus d e to the power minus q very good so now you have one function on this side and another function on this side so what will be the continuity condition at x is equal to 0 isn't it going to be psi of 0 minus is equal to psi of 0 plus yes isn't it so yeah. what is psi of 0 minus now i take the limit x tends to 0 from the left hand side of the wave function correct yeah. so on the left of x is equal to 0 what is the wave function p e to the power qx correct. plus p now take the limit x tends to 0 in this what do you get you will get 1 here no c yeah. you will just get yeah. c what yeah. what you get here you will get d correct yeah c plus so, d ha c plus d what will be there on the right hand side uh, a plus b exactly a plus b so this is the first condition that we obtain yeah. okay now <clears throat> let's now impose the derivative also okay so psi dash of 0 minus is equal to psi dash of 0 plus yeah. right if i do that <coughs> then what do i get a cq 
ओके क्यू ए टू दी पावर क्यू है वेल दिस इज जीरो माइनस सो विल द एक्स बी देयर यू हैव टू टेक द लिमिट नो एक्स टेंडिंग टू सो दिस विल बिकम वन अगेन यस हाँ सो दिस विल बिकम क्यू टाइम्स सी इनटू वन या दिस विल बिकम जीरो माइनस क्यू हेलो हेलो एस हाँ सुहास कैन यू टेल मी के जस्ट थिंक लाउड व्हाट विल दिस बिकम व्हाट शुड आई राइट हियर सी सी ए टू दी हाँ ओके दैट्स सी इनटू वन हाँ इधर दैट्स सी इनटू वन इज़न्ट इट एंड सो दिस बिकम्स वन एंड देन दिस बिकम्स डी ओके Yeah. on the right hand side i take the derivative of this wave function okay if i take the derivative then ik will come out and again i will get a minus b okay yeah thank you suhas you can mute all right so <clears throat> this is the condition that we got okay now what we are going to do is we are going to now take the other boundary okay of this free part and then here also apply exactly these two conditions that the psi is continuous and the d psi by dx is continuous okay and to help me with this is uh, uh unimaya online yes sir yeah so unimaya can you help me with uh, uh, imposing this condition yeah <coughs> so what i want to do is let's say at x is equal to a <coughs> i want to impose a minus <coughs> is equal to a plus okay okay is it fine now yeah. how do i impose this so do i know a the a wave a function a between 0 and a i need to equate the wave function exactly so what is the wave function for a minus A, a raised to i k a very good plus b raised to min minus i k very nice okay so this sets the left hand side now what is there on the right hand side do we know the wave function there yeah what is the wave function there it's c e raised to q x plus d e raised to minus q x into e raised to i k a plus b very nice okay that's correct So yeah, I mean, instead of x, there is a. Huh? Sorry, so b. there is a. Is it b here or a here? It's b. Why should it be b? Because the x is a here, no? Yeah. Sorry, a. Hmm. It's a, right? So yeah. this will be a. <clears throat> Now tell me something. Have I written this correctly? Is there any mistake in this? So let me give you the answer. There is a small mistake. Okay? Can you identify that mistake? So this capital here, K. ha, the capital K, right? That is wrong. Small so, k. Maya, you tell me what is? Ha, uh, huh, it should be small k. Small right? k. So why should it be small k instead of capital K? So this goes back to the Bloch's theorem. Okay. Yeah. So the yeah, Bloch's right? a crystal momentum. Ah, exactly. So this is the crucial point that now you see there is a mixture of the capital K and the small k in the same equation. and this small k is coming purely because of the bloch's theorem yeah. okay so that's the input of the bloch's theorem right the rest yes. of it is basically quantum mechanics in fact bloch's theorem is also quantum mechanics but you know we proved a separate theorem for periodic potentials and uh, the the point is that we are not solving the problem of just two barriers and one free part right it's a problem of the barriers being sequential and periodic and infinite infinitely long Yeah. right so that's where the input of the block theorem is going in so this k 
is the quantum number of the electron in the system in the 1d periodic potential system yeah thank you nima you can mute yourself now thank you sir okay so this gives us one more condition right now uh rishikesh are you online yes sir yeah so rishikesh how many variables do we have uh variables uh, seven hmm. <coughs> Sir, which sir, which equation? Uh, for the see, last one. No, no, not for the last one. For the entire set of equations, see, we have uh, uh, two wave functions in two different parts of the periodic potential, right? Yes, sir. And if you look at just the wave functions, then how many coefficients do we have? Uh, we have uh, k and q. Is k a coefficient? k is not a coefficient no no k is a variable ha k is a variable right but k determines yeah. the energy oh. the bare energy of the particle right but what oh, about yes, the sir. coefficients so i'm asking you about the coefficients in the wave function there are four coefficients oh a b c d ha uh, a b c d correct so there are four coefficients now how many equations do we need to solve the four four coefficients Uh, four coefficient four. Four, right? So we have only yes. three. So can you tell me what is the fourth equation? Uh, okay. So remember what we did here. What what did we do at x is equal to zero? What were the two equations? We equated uh, the function. function. Uh, hmm? We equated uh, the function the both sides of the zero. Exactly, and we equated something else also, right? What did we equate? Derivative. Derivative. Continuous. Exactly. So we should do the same thing here also, right? Ah uh, yes sir. Ah. Uh, so which means at x is equal to a, we should equate the wave function as well as the derivative. Okay. So which uh, yes, means uh. psi dash of a minus. should be equal to psi dash of a plus correct yes, right sir. okay so now can you tell me by looking at these wave functions right and also using block theorem as unimaya did can you tell me what is the condition i should write here what is psi dash of a plus uh d by dx of yes a e raise to I K X at A uh, sorry plus B e raised to minus I K X at X is equal to A correct right? yes should be equal to D by D X of mm -hmm. uh, C e raised to Q yes. X plus D e raised to minus Q X okay at at X is equal to A is that all uh, sorry uh, in That uh, e raised to so, uh -huh. sorry derivative, the whole derivative. Derivative will it apply to the phase factor also? Yes, no, it's with respect to x. No, it won't uh -huh. affect. It won't, right? So it can come out, correct? So it I can write correctly. Very nice. Okay. So I am going through this algebra because see the thing is we uh, if i just tell you that we can equate psi and d psi by dx they are continuous and so on i can i could have just written the equations and actually have gone ahead and solved them okay but i think it's very important to know how these equations are derived because this is one of the very few examples that you will come across which is completely exactly solvable okay i'm going on emphasizing that because in condensed matter systems there there are not many models of real systems which are exactly solvable and which also explain a lot of concepts okay so especially for theorists okay whoever is doing going to do theory in their phd please remember make sure you understand every aspect of this problem right every equation you should derive it by yourself you should go ahead and find out the condition for getting the abcds 
for getting the relation between the small k and the capital k okay so uh, uh, yeah thank you rishikesh you can mute yourself now. thank you sir yeah so with this we get the fourth condition and uh, to write the fourth condition let me just erase this part sir i have a question yes go ahead uh, for uh, three and four equation uh, huh. for the right hand side part uh, mm -hmm. you have used the block theorem so yes. uh, here uh, a to a plus b has been transformed to minus b to zero so isn't it the point will be x is equals to b here uh, in three and four right hand side part i think you are right yeah sorry i missed that in fact i think unimaya was also mentioning that i glossed over it you are right so what we are doing is we have actually assumed the wave function to be c e to the power q x and d e to the power minus q x in the region minus b to zero you are absolutely right we are translating this to here so we should in fact use the x is equal to b here thank you yeah that's correct so i'll modify that yeah this should be x is equal to b okay so any other corrections so let me write this equation now and that's going to be i k a e to the power i k a plus or minus e to the power minus i k a is equal to e to the power i k a plus b and then q c e to the power q b minus d e to the power minus q b okay <clears throat> so this gives us the fourth condition sorry so we have four equations 1 2 3 4 the first two equations by we got by equating the wave function and its derivative both at x is equal to 0 and the uh, uh, second and the third and fourth equation we got by equating the derivatives and the wave function at x is equal to a but also incorporating the blocks theorem okay so with these we have four equations and what i am going so to do yeah sorry should be minus b not b uh where should i here is it at all the places where you have used b c e to the power minus q b and d e to the power q b uh can you explain in which uh, equation are you talking about in 3 and 4 yes yeah, sir both in 3 and 4 what i said them I mean, that will be minus b this 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 okay 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 yeah x is equal to minus b so this will in fact become c e to the power minus qb right yeah that's correct yeah. yes thank you I'm making this mistake yeah that's absolutely right so this should actually be x is equal to minus b so here also in fact uh, what we are doing here is the a plus is actually e to the power i k a plus b psi minus b uh, and we are looking at this side so we are looking at minus b plus no minus b uh, yeah minus b plus the right of minus b correct so this is basically the condition that we are using is this correct now Yes, yeah okay okay so given these four equations let me just write these four equations i'm not going to fully solve them because there is a lot of algebra there but i have made some notes and those of you who are who are interested and uh, uh, are having difficulty in deriving just let me know i will send you those notes okay but let me write these equations because they are instructive the first equation was this the second equation was i capital k a minus b is equal to capital q c minus d the third equation is uh, i k <coughs> sorry it was a e to the power i k a plus b e to the power minus i k a is equal to c e to the power minus q b this okay and the fourth equation is this so um uh, krishna can you unmute yourself yes sir 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, have you solved these equations before? Yes, sir. I have done. You have done it, right? Okay. So, let me just uh, write down the. Uh, so, okay. What we are going to do is first tell me uh, what is this system of equations? Uh, what is the type of this system of equations? This is linear system. Linear system. Okay. What else? Is it homogeneous? Inhomogeneous? That one I forgot. But I think it is homogeneous. Ah, it's homogeneous. So yeah, one inside separate. Ah, it's homogeneous, right? So essentially, what we are saying is that if we write it in a matrix form, then the variables here are a, b, c, d, right? And there will be coefficients here. For example, the first two rows will be one, one, right? A plus B minus C minus D, right? So if I write the first equation here, then I will get minus one, minus one, right? Equal to zero. So because I have a matrix uh, here M, which is multiplying X and which is zero, right? So this is a homogeneous system. Okay. Yeah. Now, for a homogeneous system, uh, what should I do if I want to get non-trivial solutions for the variables? The determinant should be uh, the determinant should be zero. Zero. So the m should be singular, correct? So if the m is singular, only then we will get non-trivial solutions for A, B, C, D. Because if m was singular, then the x will become zero, and that's a trivial solution. The trivial solution is always valid. If you put a, b, c, d to be zero in all these equations, they will automatically satisfy, right? But we want to know the non-trivial solutions. Okay. So Krishna, you can mute yourself. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. So is uh, Shomita online? Yes, sir. Okay. So Shomita, can you tell me now uh, how will I proceed? So if the determinant of m is zero, okay. So what should I do? Now? Okay, uh, I should do. Let me tell you the final answer. Okay, by substituting the determinant to be zero, what I get, I will write down the answer, and you tell me how should I proceed to get this answer. Okay. So this is like your, you know, to prove kind of questions. Prove that this is what you get. Okay. So I'll write the answer here. This is small k. And now you tell me how do I go from here to here? Uh, I can grow from here to here by uh, setting determinant m equal to zero. Yes, but if you set determinant equal to zero, right, you will get a, a really horrible equation in terms of all the exponentials. But do you see any yeah. exponential in the uh, final answer? No, uh, I I can get these solutions from combina combination of these exponentials. Correct, but is there a slightly different way in which you can convert the equations directly into the trigonometric functions? So instead uh, of it, it, I can change uh, this. Mm. Uh, equation three and four mm -hmm. in such a way that uh, the coefficients uh, I can uh, take out the coefficients yes. and make the exponential terms like sine hyperbolic and cos hyperbolic. Right. So what you are saying is you can use e to the power i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta, and you can use yes. e to the power theta is cos hyperbolic theta plus sine hyperbolic theta. Yeah. Right. And e to the power minus yeah. theta is essentially this minus this. So you can take all of these exponentials and then substitute in those exponentials these forms in terms of the trigonometric functions, and then rederive your equation three and four in terms of a and b. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. So yeah. in fact, that is the way to uh, the, to proceed. But what I would suggest, if you guys want to solve this, that instead of writing down the full determinant and trying to put that equal to zero. Just take the first two equations, okay, and then use them cleverly in equation three and four 
what you will see is that you will get a plus b and a minus b and c plus d and c minus d in equations 3 and 4. Just eliminate those using 1 and 2 and you will get this equation. Okay. So please try it out. Those who are doing theory must do this. Okay. Those who are doing experiments should also do this, but it's not mandatory. But those who are doing theory should definitely do this. Okay. And this is the final equation that we get. Okay. So Shomita, we are not done yet. I am going to ask you something more. Okay. So in this equation, what is the known and what is the unknown? This capital Q, capital mm -hmm. K, unknown, mm -hmm. and uh, small k, yeah, unknown in terms of those uh, u zero. Okay, so Q and K are known, and the small k is unknown. Yeah. Okay. Now let me rephrase the question. Okay. Okay. Which is the dependent variable and which is the independent variable? Or let me rephrase it once again. Okay. I am claiming that this is the eigenvalue equation for the periodic potential problem. Okay. So I'm claiming that this is the eigenvalue equation for the periodic potential problem, right? For every given quantum number of that problem, I can find out the energy corresponding to that quantum number. How can I do that? So what should I take as the independent variable and what should I find out as the unknown? Capital K and capital Q are related. Those yes, uh, are dependent. Correct. That's correct. And small k is not dependent on uh, these. Correct. So is capital K dependent on small k? See, the whole thing about chronic penny model is once you come to this equation, right? It's actually yeah. understanding this equation that forms the crux of the problem. Okay which is why I'm going through this in a little bit of detail. One does not understand what is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable. Okay. So you are going on the right track. So keep going it. You, you are saying that K and Q are related. So I, if I find K capital K, I know capital Q and vice versa. Okay. And you said yeah. that the small K is an independent variable, right? So now yeah. can you relate these statements to the eigenvalue problem that we had started out to solve. What was the eigenvalue problem that we started out to solve? Oh, in this problem, a small mm -hmm. k is also related to capital K and Q again. In this problem, right? Through this equation. Yeah. Okay. But what was the eigenvalue problem that we started out to solve? What was the quantum number? See, remember in yeah. the harmonic oscillator problem, the n is a quantum number and the energy yeah. eigenvalue is E n equal to n plus half h cross omega. So this determines the relation between the energy and the quantum number, right? Yeah. So through this equation, can I do something similar? What is the quantum number here? The quantum number was small k. Small k. So and what do I want to find? I want to find the energy for these uh, some exactly. psi k. I want to find this, right? Okay. Yeah. Now this equation, what does it give me? It gives me capital K, right? Yeah. For every small k, it tells me what are the possible values of small of capital K that will satisfy this. Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And from the capital K, can I get the energy? From the capital K, I can get the energy uh, in the region where the potential is zero. No, you no, no, no. That's not the point. See, the E K is given by H cross squared k squared by 2m. So remember the energy and the k, they are related in this way. Yeah. So it's not but, that. Uh, uh, is this the capital K here? Huh? See, the energy I mean, is related in the barrier region in this way. Yeah. Right. But yeah. if I take this q here and re rewrite this in terms of capital K, then I get back the same equation, isn't it? This E is actually h cross squared k squared by 2m. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, what I'm saying is, let me take the Q from here, okay? And replace the Q in terms of the energy. 
okay and let me take the k here and rewrite that in terms of the energy then do you see that this becomes an eigen value equation for every k there will be certain values of the capital e that are allowed so in other words what i'm saying is this capital q is given by 2m by h cross square square root sorry square root of this into u0 minus e okay and this is given by square root of 2m e by h cross square correct yes sir yeah and this these two can also be written in terms of the capital e this can also be written in terms of the capital e right yes so now on the left hand side what is the variable it is only the cap capital e right and on the right hand side it's only small k small k right so which means yeah. now if we find what are uh, if we treat this as a non linear equation fix the small k and find out what are the possible values of the capital e that satisfy this equation we would have the dispersion yes we have the dispersion relation that is energy the possible values of the energy for a given value of the quantum number small k yeah right yeah thank yeah. you you can put yourself so now is this statement clear to everyone if there is any doubt please let me know now because this understanding this is crucial to what we are going to do next that is this equation forms the eigen value equation for the chronic penny model and the left hand side is purely in terms of the capital e which is the energy eigen value the right hand side is purely in terms of the uh, uh, the crystal quantum number which is small k okay so when we solve this equation we will get energy as a function of k okay which is what we okay. had set out to find out sir yes sir uh, in the left hand side q square minus k square is that k is capital k or small k that is capital k <clears throat> okay sir okay yeah. yeah because that is what we had started out with right it will remain the same we cannot arbitrarily change it to from capital k to small k is that okay see that is what i have written here also yes, this sir, uh, i just uh, i was just uh, misunderstanding this no, whether no. it is capital k or i'm saying you see i have written here also that this the capital k is given by square root of 2me by h cross square and the capital q is given by 2m by h cross square u not minus e right so in that sense i can replace all the q and k on the left hand side with only one variable which is e okay and then treat this as an eigen value equation is it okay uh, yes sir yeah any other doubts so this equation turns out to be a highly non linear equation okay and you can see that because there are trigonometric functions there are hyperbolic functions and so on so what we will do is we will solve this equation uh in using python okay and before solving it in python what we will do is we will first look at how does the left hand side part uh, look like okay what does what is the form of the left hand side and then choose a particular value of the k and see what should the solutions look like okay so that's the plan and uh, um, i would encourage everyone present here to um, to learn python whether it, uh, you are an experimentalist or a theorist because python is an upcoming language first of all uh, it is very very powerful and you can condense for example programs that you write in c and fortran which might take you 20 to 30 lines you can condense that in one single line okay so there are very powerful libraries available in python and you can also write web pages for example you can do machine learning in python Uh, you can do uh, visualization you can do animation you can do data science so name it and you can do it okay so uh, and there are hundreds of tutorials available available on the web and it's very very easy to write programs and you can do it on windows you can do it on mac you can do it on linux and the best part is that it is free okay python is free so it's not like uh, you know the uh, intel compilers or for example <coughs> um 
many other languages like matlab and mathematica for example they are not free okay you have to purchase them and they are very expensive but and you can do everything that you can do in matlab or mathematica with python okay um and you can do it on any platform no application you know no special uh, software required in fact in linux it comes built in in windows you can just download something and install it it's free so please go ahead and learn python okay and there are tutorials which teach you how to use python in maybe about 24 hours or something and also my philosophy is that uh, i just go back to google whenever i don't know something and download those commands and then write a program okay i don't need to remember the syntax every time right so this is the equation that we are going to solve using python so let me show you how the program looks like can you all see the screen Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay. So I've increased the font. So <clears throat> what I'm doing here is the first two commands are basically importing the libraries. Okay. This is a plotting library, and this math library is for using the trigonometric functions. And uh, what I have done here is that I have taken u zero to be of some value. So 240 is what I have chosen. Then the value of a I have chosen to be one. and the value of b i have chosen it to be a by 20 okay so in real terms what does it mean what i have said here is the following remember the potential was like this okay and this here is small b and this here is capital is small a right so we are saying that the ionic part which is the free part is uh, is around 1 okay this is around 1 and this is a by 20 so the barrier region is extremely small okay and the free part is very large that's what we are saying here and uh, you will see later on why we are doing this okay so if we do this then what we are going to do is we are going to find out <coughs> what does the left hand side look like okay so i am going to plot the left hand side as a function of capital k So remember, I can convert the capital Q also in terms of capital K by replacing the E here by h cross squared k squared by 2n. Okay, so I'll replace that and then plot the left hand side as a function of capital K times a. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> let me show you what that looks like. And if you, uh, if any of you need this program, just let me know. I'll forward that program also. So to run this, it's very simple. i can just do this and this is what it looks like okay the left hand side is plotted so the x axis you can see is capital k a and the right and the y axis is uh, the left hand side function okay so let me tell you what is happening here we are taking this function and then plotting it as a function of k a now what is the right hand side it's cos k a plus b okay so let me ask Uh, so hini are you online yes sir yeah so so hini we have plotted the left hand side function yeah right here yes yes huh. so this function is plotted as a function of capital k a and the right hand side is cos k a plus b okay if i choose any value of small k right so i can choose values of small k between minus pi to pi right because outside that it is periodic because this is a periodic potential isn't it yes yeah so i can choose values for k between small k between minus pi to pi is there any restriction on the right hand side is there any bound on the right hand side does it have to be restricted between some values Uh, it should be smaller than one. Exactly. Uh, Greater than uh, minus one. Very nice. So it should be bounded between plus one and minus one. Correct. Yes. Yes. Now you can see here that this is k a, right? And here is uh, this one is uh, plus one, and this is minus one, right? Yes. Can you see the? Uh, yeah, you can see the pen, right? So if I draw an imaginary line here, right? you can see that it will cut in some places okay so what we are saying is let's say i draw this function here 
and I draw the line plus one and minus one. Okay. Right. So uh, the, the for any value of the small k, the left the right hand side is bounded between minus one and one. So if I choose some generic k, for example, I choose k to be equal to pi by three. Okay. Right. So any can you can yes. you hear me? Yeah. Yes. So I choose k to be some value which is pi by three. Okay. Now for for k equal to pi by three and a and b given to me, so I had chosen a as one and b as uh, one by twenty or something. So this will be very close to pi by three. Okay. And what is cos pi by three? Uh, uh, root uh, three by two. Is that uh, right? No, one by uh, two. Yeah, it's one by one. two. So it's one by two, and this was plus one, and this is minus one. So I'm taking plus one by two, which is here, and then drawing the line, and then I'm trying to find out what are the values of the k a. Remember, the x-axis is k a, which cut this line. Okay. And I can see that it is cutting the line here. I can see that it is cutting the line here, 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 and so on. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So, does this tell you that this equation does it have a unique relation between the small k and the capital K? Is there a one-to-one -one correspondence between the small k and the capital K? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, no, because uh, all the shaded region from that point, uh, mm -hmm. if I uh, draw a line, will be a solution. Exactly. So all the dots that I have drawn here, they are all solutions, right? Yes. <coughs> so this is a solution. This is a solution. This is a solution, and so on, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Now let me ask you the reverse question. Let me take this region here. Now, why have I drawn this region? This region, actually, if you see these two points, okay, this is the bound of plus one, right? And this region here, this small hump that you see, let me draw that with. Okay, let me not try that. Let me just expand this. This small hump here. Do you see that <clears throat> I cannot have any small k for which I can get this region as a solution? Do you see that? yes correct which means that in this region okay between this to this the capital k a will never be a solution for any small k yes hmm? so this region actually turns out to be the band gap okay and the bands turn out to be these these are the bands okay and the regions which lie outside the plus one to minus one, they form the band gaps. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Right. So <clears throat> now you see why this, how this band structure is arising. Okay. So you see that first of all, do you see that the band gaps are arising only when the uh, the right hand side hits plus one or minus one? Yes. Yes, which means yes. when is this going to hit plus one? <clears throat> Do you see when this is going to hit plus one? When is the right hand side? Do you see when is this uh, side going to hit plus one? Uh. K equal to zero, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So <clears throat> for k equal to zero, so if I take k equal to zero, then it's going to hit plus one. When is it going to hit minus one? When k is pi by a plus b. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So <clears throat> you see, these are special points. This is the Brillouin zone edge, and this is the Brillouin zone center. Do you see that? Yes. Yeah. So we will go back to this point later. But uh, uh, is everybody so you can mute yourself? Thanks. Thanks, Owen. Okay. 
so uh, does everybody see here that the gaps will arise only when the left hand side function goes beyond plus 1 and minus 1 okay and <clears throat> the bands here will arise whenever there is a solution for this equation for any given small k okay so any given small k will give me a function value which is between plus 1 and minus 1 okay and i am trying to solve this equation graphically by taking when is the left hand side equal to the right hand side <clears throat> so remember we were trying to solve the band structure of a 1d periodic potential problem and that problem has been reduced to solution of a nonlinear equation and the nonlinear equation is being solved by looking at the left hand side as a function of capital k or as a function of energy and the right hand side as a function of small k and we are looking at when can these two be equal okay that's the that's the basic uh, uh, technique with which we are solving this nonlinear equation okay so if that is clear let me go ahead and run the python program further and show you what is the band structure that comes out for this problem so this is the band structure that comes out okay so what i am plotting here now is the solution for ek as a function of small k so for every small k i find out what is the right hand side okay and then i figure out what are the different values of the capital k that satisfy this okay this equation and from that i can see that the ek depends on k in this particular way and you can see band gaps arising at these two edges okay so <clears throat> uh, this is the solution of the chronic penny model and it clearly shows you how bands arise okay it clearly shows you how band gaps arise and so on right and uh, what you also see is that uh, all this is happening because we started out with electrons as waves uh, the electrons as waves go through these barriers uh, they they reflect they transmit and so on so they propagate they reflect and transmit and because of all the conditions of the wave function at the boundaries that is the wave function continuity and the derivative continuity we derived certain conditions then also incorporated the blocks theorem and after doing all that we arrived at this nonlinear equation which describes the band structure of the problem okay so that's the full scheme of things right and <clears throat> uh, you must remember that this is uh, this is the extent to which we got the exact solution so when i said exact solution the this equation here this nonlinear equation here represents the exact solution okay so beyond this one can do things analytically but one has to take certain limits okay and let me not go into that you can look up uh, kittel and in kittel there is a particular limit that is mentioned so they uh, in kittel there is a limit that is mentioned which is the uh, the barrier width going to zero but the barrier height going to infinity so it's almost like delta function potentials delta function barriers okay and if you take that limit then you get a simpler equation which can be solved analytically or at least it can be visualized analytically okay this equation can't even be visualized analytically it's very difficult to do that okay so <clears throat> are there any doubts at this point no good okay so uh, what we'll do is we will stop here for today and tomorrow we'll take up the tight binding method and the tight binding method is a very very powerful way to extract the band structure of any arbitrary periodic lattice system okay so the input that you need for uh, the tight binding method are the matrix elements of the kinetic energy operator between the orbitals of two different atoms if you know that then you can derive the band structure of any per any lattice system that you can give me okay uh, <clears throat> so uh, we will do this tight binding method in the first quantization or in the usual quantum mechanics way but there is also a a different way to do this which uses something called second quantization and uh, unfortunately that is not within the scope of this syllabus but if uh, some of you are interested then i can take a separate class and uh, uh, teach that method also okay and i know some of you might need it in your research so i would be happy to teach that but let me know if you need okay so just send me an email 
uh, whoever is interested i can <coughs> schedule a class <coughs> okay so we are done for yeah sir uh, when uh, we are uh, assuming the uh, coning penny model uh, the uh, you are talking about that uh, in a uh, from 0 to a uh, this is free but in context of ionic or electronic structure but uh, it should be bound so uh, i understood that whole the problem is reverse but uh, can we do the pro- same problem using the negative uh, uh, bound potential <clears throat> yeah you can <clears throat> the thing is see what we have assumed here is that the energy is uh, uh, below u0 and above 0 right so the idea that the electron is within the crystal is being represented by the fact that the energy is bounded within 0 and uh, u0 okay so you could do the reverse also you could say that the reference energy for me is 0 and the binding energy is minus u0 <clears throat> that's what you want to do right yes sir yeah. yes sir you can do that and you can take the energies to be negative okay so in that sense you can represent the e to be minus h cross squared k squared by 2m and you can do the whole problem <coughs> except and, that and you, I, need to, you need to map the barriers carefully okay wherever the ions are the potential will be minus u0 okay sir and i will reach at the same uh, result you should yes okay there should be in fact you should not even try to solve the equations what you should do is you should write down the schrodinger's equation and try to do a one to one mapping between the schrodinger's equation of the problem that we have described and the schrodinger's equation of the problem that you are describing once you do a one to one mapping at the problem level then the mapping at the solution level will be automatically defined Okay, sir. Okay, then you you don't have to re-derive all the equations. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> okay, we'll meet tomorrow. Sir, <clears throat> so at four. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, at four. Yeah. Okay. Bye, sir. Yeah bye <clears throat> bye bye